Good morning, all my fellow emblematic, memorable, recognizable patriots. Let's take a look at the Wall Street Journal. Look at the headline. Justice Department to sue Georgia over its new voting law. What is so bad about Georgia's new voting law that Uncle Joe is coming after them? Let's take a look. Washington. The Biden administration is suing the state of Georgia over its new voting law. A person familiar with the matter said Friday, the first such challenge to Republican-backed efforts in multiple states to tighten voting laws in ways critics say will discriminate against black and minority voters. Yes. That's an awful lot of scare words in one sentence. Let's see what else they say. The lawsuit is expected to allege that Georgia violated federal voting rights law when it earlier this year enacted changes to the state's election requirements, including altering how people vote absentee and where people can drop off their Alex! This, of course, is due to the Republicans roundly defeating the Democrats in a bill that failed to pass, as they mentioned in the next paragraph. The expected lawsuit comes two days after Senate Republicans blocked Democrats from moving ahead with elections legislation forcing the party to devise a new way forward. A new way forward. A new way to get the illegals and people that shouldn't vote to vote possibly multiple times. After weeks of intra-party wrangling and fruitless calls from progressives to advance the bill without GOP support. But, In order for that bill to pass, it would require a two-thirds majority. And, as we all know, the Senate is split exactly down the middle at 50-50, which is how this vote went. Fifty Democrats said, we want the bill. Fifty Republicans said no. Let's go on a little bit more. As you can see, the new Attorney General, Merrick Garland, is doubling his staff in order to harass states on their voting laws. Here is what the Georgia voting law actually does. The Georgia law requires absentee voters to request ballots by providing their driver's license number, the last four digits of their social security number, or a copy of some other accepted form of identification. That doesn't seem so bad, does it? We all have driving licenses. Well, if not a driving license, a state ID, because you need an ID for almost anything. You need an ID to buy smokes. You need an ID to go into a bar. You need an ID to drive. Hell, You need an ID for most workplaces now. If you're going to college, you need an ID. If you want to travel, go to an airport, try to get through the airport without an ID. In fact, if you want to go overseas, you need a very special ID, a passport. And guess what? 40% of all U.S. citizens have passports. So 40% of all U.S. citizens They have multiple IDs. Now, according to the U.S. Census, about 10% of the population say they don't have a current ID. They don't say they don't have an ID. They just say they have let it lapse for the most part. I would say very few people have never had an ID. Now, I noticed that the federal government is picking on Georgia. Do you know Hawaii has very similar voting laws? 
They're not picking on the democratic state with almost exactly the same laws. They're picking on poor Georgia because there's a few more Republicans in that state. Is demanding voter ID racist? Well, let's take a look. This from the investmentwatchblog.com. Here's a list of countries that have voter IDs. Not all countries, just democratic or semi-democratic countries. You see, the United States is the only one that's red X, the only one that re does requirement IDs. Even Haiti requires an ID right above them. Mozambique requires one. Iraq requires one. Tanzania, Ecuador, Albania, Nepal, Trinidad and Tobago, Uruguay, Japan, Costa Rica, Botswana, Estonia, Chile. I'm just glancing all over the place, but they did leave a couple out. Let's go to one more website. This is the Federalist Papers. <laughs> Take a look. Mexico wasn't listed in that group of democratic or semi-democratic countries, nor was South Africa. I would think both Russia and China have voter IDs. I just couldn't find them. The United States pretty much stands alone as a democratic country that doesn't have voter ID. It's not like our people don't have IDs. Like I said, it is very hard to find an individual without an ID. Most of us have several. We have our driving licenses. We probably have a work ID. If not, we have a student ID. If we travel at all internationally, we have passports. We do have our credit cards, which are forms of ID. We also have social security numbers. Most of us have had social security numbers from just about birth. Our parents registered us and got us our social security cards so our fathers could claim us on income tax forms. So we are well documented, well ID'd here in the United States. It's a complete fallacy to claim demanding a voting ID at a voting booth is discriminatory or racist. In fact, suggesting that a person doesn't have an ID because if they're too poor and stupid to get one, I would suggest is discriminatory and racist.